there's no one right answer. There's no one right expert. On this summit, you're going to be hearing from tons of experts. You're going to be hearing stories that inspire you because the animals have lived so long or been so healthy or recovered from hyperthyroidism or recovered from felineus and affiliate granulomas or whatever. It doesn't mean that that is the answer for your cat, even with the same problem. So you are the one that lives with your cat cats 24-7. So you're the one who really can take all this information, decide to use some of it, and then see what happens. So that's number one, is there's no run right way. Number two, and this is really critical, and the main difference between how I was trained as a veterinarian um, and, and what I developed, what I learned as I became more holistic, is there, the cause, whatever the problem is, unless it's something really like a broken bone or, you know, a, a tooth that just broke off or something, unless it's something like really a cause like that. Something acute. Yeah. So there could be a physical thing. But other, other than that, the cause of all problems is an imbalance in the energy field. So each of us is born with an energy field and it's a particular shape and each one of us is different. We might spend our whole life being a shy, slightly timid kitty. We might spend our whole life being, ah, I'm going to go for everything. Bat that toy around and bat you around a little bit and bat that other kitty around. You might be, your energy field shape might have you be super sensitive to what you're eating. And if you're not, if you're eating dry food, you're not going to do well. Other kitties might be eating dry food and actually thrive. I never would recommend dry food because it's not good for the planet and it's not as good for health. However, again, when they're sens not sensitive to it, it might not be as big a deal. So whatever, they may be sensitive to toxins. They might be more sensitive to the emotions of the people around them. This is something you're born with. Oh, wait a minute. Well, that's genetics. You can't fix that. Well, yes, you can. If you increase the vitality and improve the balance of this energy field, then what they're sensitive to has a higher uh, margin. It has a higher trigger level. So if they're born with a sensitivity to foods and they're perfectly healthy and vital and wonderful, they may do fine eating food that's not as healthy as, as it is for other, other cats. Um, so the key is to improve this vitality and rebalance because here's what happens. If the vitality is a little lower, and there's something they're susceptible to, and we don't always know what it is, this energy field is then pushed out of balance. It wants to get back in balance again as much as it can, what's normal for it. The only way that it can get back into balance is to produce a symptom. So that's the cause of every symptom of every disease is that the energy field got pushed out of balance and created a symptom. Therefore, when you, as we did in conventional, do in conventional medicine, when you focus on getting merely getting rid of a symptom, you're not helping that energy field rebalance itself. Make sense? Yes, definitely. It reminds me a lot of uh, in Chinese medicine, how each type of personality is a different constitution that's associated with a different element. And they're all prone to different um, balances that then we have to rebalance to restore that vitality. 
And even in Chinese medicine or in any approach, and that's why Chinese medicine is holistic or can be holistic, Yeah, is if you have a good balance, even before there are any symptoms, if you're working on maintaining balance, maybe you can identify through pulse taking, through uh, tongue, through just observation, this shy, timid cat or this whoppy cat might fall into a wood, metal, et cetera. And then you can keep, by keeping the balance high, they're not, they will not develop those illnesses. Or if they do develop the illnesses, you then work at bringing them back into balance. Now that's, this is the real key thing. And it's, it's really, I'm glad that you brought this up because not all holistic practitioners, veterinarians, or, or lay practitioners, not all of them recognize that there's an underlying energy field imbalance that needs to be rebalanced. We have veterinarians who have taken a weekend course in acupuncture, and they learned, do these points if it's arthritic, do these points if it's hyperthyroid, do these points. Now, does that make sense from what you've already learned? No. No because every animal is unique. Each animal is different. And we don't know what's going on in the energy field. 